In 2013, the World Academy of Art and Science was invited by the United Nations office in Geneva to collaborate on a conference on global challenges in the 21st century. And we had about 200 diplomats at that conference and it brought to bear the burden with great power and clarity of what were the challenges facing humanity at that time. This was five years after the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, economies were still recovering from massive unemployment and the collapse of financial markets. Uh, but fundamentally, when we look back on it, I would say it was a period of optimism. This was the period in which the 17 SDGs were in the process of formulation achieving something unprecedented in the history of humanity. That was the thinking of the time. We were thinking confidently of a brighter future, but recognizing that the problems facing us were really tremendous. Now, when I look back, it's now eight years later, the problems seem more formative even than they did then though we have made so much of progress in recognizing them and in taking uh, unprecedented steps to address them. I think there's a reason for that. The conclusions that we drew in 2008, in 2013 were that the problems we face today cannot be faced effectively by the existing system of governance at the national, multilateral, or institutional level. We need to go one step further to really work in global solidarity with a level of cooperation that is unprecedented and which we see the first signs of that with the progress on the 17 SDGs and more recently uh, with the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And more so, to the gradual awakening, too slow we will all feel, but significant progress in recognizing the need for global solidarity and action on climate change, which looms much more seriously in our minds today than it did just eight years ago. So the challenges are unprecedented. It's also true that the opportunities, the potentials, and the capacities of the world are unprecedented. We have never had the magnitude of the resources, the magnitude of the technological capabilities, uh, the communication, the networking, uh, the technology, and so forth uh, that we have available today. But our conclusion was that's not enough. It's not enough we have these resources we need fundamental changes in not only our public policies, not only in the institutions of governance at all levels, in business as well as in government and civil society. We also need fundamental changes in our educational system. And to go deeper than that, rather than thinking of education simply as an institutional activity, we need fundamental changes in the ideas on which our educational system is based. And many of the speakers today have already referenced to it, the compartmentalization of disciplines, the compartmentalization of cultural perspectives and so forth. We need a new view of knowledge. We need to invent a new self-conception of our knowledge of humanity. And at even a deeper level than that, we need to change the way we think. This was the conclusions in 2013. I think that everything that's happened since has reaffirmed that need. I think with greatest gratitude, we, we can look back on the progress of education over the last 200 years and its contributions to humanity. We can say the same thing uh, uh, about many other sectors, but the the question is, it's not enough. We need to do more. We have had the luxury of 
evolving very slowly decade after decade after decade. And now as several of the speakers have mentioned, the pace of development is accelerated so much. We don't have that luxury of a trial and error, hit and miss. We try this and then we change and go back to something else. We've got to convert this slow, somewhat faulty process of in the independent, isolated trial and error work into a conscious process of social transformation. At the global level, this is an unprecedented endeavor. So for me, essentially, this conference is not about education per se, though education is the heart of our discussion. It's about human equality and human rights. It's about human security. It's about the sustainability of life on this planet. And the reason we've put education at the center of it is because it is the area where, and leadership, of course, which many of you have mentioned, it's, a, it's about the fact that without fundamental changes in this institution, we cannot achieve and rise to the challenges we face. Every institution in society has a role to play. Business, finance, government, civil society, no doubt about it. But I think none is more important than our educational institutions, or rather than in education as an institution of society, rather than as a group of institutions working independently or in collaboration with each other, as a power, as a power for conscious social evolution. So I say this to indicate, uh, uh, make emphatic, that I realized we are, we are doing what Federico Mayor started with, we're trying to reinvent a better future. And it doesn't come through the old methods. It doesn't come through the existing institutions. It doesn't come through the existing ways of thinking. With all appreciation for what has been achieved, we need an equally great sense of humility to recognize we need much more. We need much, much more than we have today. And no institution and no sector of society, if it really wants to sincerely address these issues, can be complacent with going ahead along existing lines. We're here today because education is such a valuable resource for us. We know we can do more with it. We know we can change much faster and more radically. And we've called together a wonderful group of speakers and a much larger audience who will be viewing and sharing and interacting with us in, in future uh, on, to identify the levers, the catalysts for the global leadership we need in the 21st century.